Hey guys, this is Mel, and I am back to talk about the 100 episode 710 titled A Little Sacrifice, which premiered Wednesday, August 5th, 2020 on The CW. I'm recording roughly an hour after the episode has aired, so huge spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, and then come back and see what I have to say about the episode. And I gotta say, after two weeks of break, they came back strong, so let's get right into it, but not quite yet. Quick YouTube shoutouts going out to Ann Doe um, for their comment on 708, which I saw just as my 709 video was rendering, so I couldn't do a shout-out in that one, so I'm doing it now. Also, thank you to Elvis Ibrahimovic, sorry if I said that wrong, for your comment in my previous video as well. And thanks to new subscribers, Dan Bang, Mokenna and Gaft F. Lillards. I hope I said those two right. Deeply apologize. I'm assuming you guys are fans of the 100s since those are the only themed videos I've been posting lately. So thank you for subscribing. Hope you check out my other videos I do as well. So thanks for that. Also, before we really start into this episode, I just want to talk about the, I guess, the virtual panel that they gave for the 100 during the at-home version of the San Diego Comic-Con. That happened within the two-week uh, little hiatus that we got. Um, it was very brief because they still couldn't talk much since we do have the remaining of the final season left. But I will talk about what they did touch upon in regards to what we could see in the final episodes. But also, they did have a bunch of video messages from former cast members um, just saying their thanks for the show and just for the fandom itself. So I'll the list is just a little bit up on screen right now if you want to see who who made an appearance. But also, you can check out that uh, Comic-Con video as well. They did mention, though, creator for Jason Rothenberg, the goal of Season 7 was to pretty much tie up any loose ends storyline-wise. And also to bring the ending of the series back to the moral of this story. So by the end of it, we should know what it was all meant to come towards. Since... A lot of the times, the question is, what would they do when survival is on the line? It tends to be the common theme of it all. Uh, for Raven, we got confirmation that she now has an understanding about Clark now, especially with what happened with her in the reactor core in the beginning of the season. With Murphy, we see him get be more of the reluctant leader or reluctant hero um, with his time in Sanctum. With Echo, we do confirmation more about its Echo's journey of grieving over Bellamy, learning what it who was who meant everything to her, and then also just seeing who Echo is without someone to actually follow, um, since she's always been the right hand person of somebody, whether it was Queen Naya of the Ice Nation, or if it was King Rowan afterwards. Um, uh, so there's that, or following someone who had a lead essentially. Um, and then with Jordan, we get a little bit more in the panel about what's to happen. They say there's more things to explore with Jordan, especially with his time during the adjustment protocol with the whole red sun thing um, and apparently he he finds out something that completely contradicts the whole bardo culture in regards to that they say that we find out the root of that culture and possibly if this last war of humanity is not a war and it could potentially be a lie which is touched upon or at least hinted to in this episode so with all that said let's get right into this episode i won't time it but hopefully i don't go over i will keep an eye on the watch on the clock this time but let's get into it so tidbit wise timeline wise essentially for sanctum it continues where we left off in 709 and then and that is with uh if we remember shahada just killed the all the faithful or attempted to kill all the faithful as we found out that there were some still left behind, uh, left alive from that and then it is continuing where 708 left off for bardo and that is when uh octavia echo and dioza um unmask themselves as disciple warriors to Clark and the others. Um, so there's that. Also, uh, a correction. I know in my 709 video, I stated that I didn't know how long um, the three the training was meant to take place in the three-month flashbacks of Bardo. Um, I rewatched it again, and apparently the, it was the full three months was their training. So they did spend 12 weeks in training. So it really took up that whole time jump where we knew that Gabriel was part of the Cypher team. So there's that. Also, in regards to the timeline, I just checked it now, but the, the 100 wiki page, I'll put a link of it up on screen as well, but when you type in timeline, they do a really good job of keeping the timeline, not only in this season, but in the series as a whole, where they have dates going back to long before 
the the first apocalypse happened it's pretty much some stuff is dated to like what is considered our time right now so that was pretty cool um i went over a little bit during um the hour before this uh recording just to see because i what was i looking for i was trying to see how old gabriel was the mindset wise to see if he did line up with um uh, with uh bill because i kind of wanted to see if the what the time dilation for them would have been from Earth to Sanctum and then from Bardo, if there's any difference. I don't think I found my answer to that. I'd have to go look into it more deeply with the, the Bardo one because they do um, sector it off. But it's really good, really detailed. So do check that out if you're really into keeping timelines in check like I am. And plus also some things with that timeline, apparently we've only been in Sanctum for less than a month, if you can believe it, like since we arrived in season six. And just like, that's like blows my mind as well too. So there's that. But episode reminder though, I would say that the title itself, A Little Sacrifice, I did not think it would mean so literally. And it was not literal, or it was not little, I should say. And there were actually many sacrifices in this episode, if you really think about it. And I'll probably touch base on that in Shockers, maybe. Let me just write that down. But episode objective, pretty much for Bardo, it's getting off the planet um, in an hour. And the second one is finding Shaheda and Sanctum, uh, which we'll get right into for our storyline. So we'll talk about first about Sanctum, and then we'll talk about Bardo. So with Sanctum, um, since it takes off right after um, Shaheda just tr- did this whole bloodbath with the faithful, now Guan Kru is on the hunt for him. And he is trying to take back control and become the commander again and having everybody kneel before him. So through all this... We see him go in a single combat with Indra for fight for the commander role. We get Maddie intervening with slicing his eye. And then in order to spare Maddie, Indra agrees to kneel to Shaheda. And she even signals to her faithful loyal followers to kneel with her kind of thing. So we do see that. While all this is happening, Murphy and Amori kind of figure out, try to figure out what Shaheda's game plan was in rev- relevance to in relation to um, the chess game that Murphy had to play against him. And they, he was saying that the faithful are still in danger um, from Shaheda because he knows that anyone with vengeance would want to grow more powerful and rise up against him. So Murphy and Amori make the decision to help hide the faithful in the sealed reactor chamber um, to keep Shaheda away. Um I don't know how long that's going to hold them. In the end, Maddie ended up being there with them. I don't know how it will hold them because he also has night blood, so it's not like he can't go in the chamber. But, like, yeah, we'll have to wait and see about that. Now, when we go back to Bardo, though, this is where we have one thing I love, and now that I've taken my screenwriting course, it's very obvious when these things happen, is that Echo established a ticking time bomb in this episode by telling Hope that she has one hour to get everybody they know off the planet before she does something very horrible and they eventually find out that echo had stolen the bioweapon and planned to use it um in bardo's fo- um uh, i think it was high hy- what was the hydration system it was in the water supply somehow that was supposed to be become airborne and pretty much crystallize all of bardo like what had happened to the original bardoans um all in the name of vengeance for Bellamy. So eventually that doesn't happen. All our characters try to stop Echo. Um, In the end, they do, but instead Hope takes the distraction and tries to do it for Echo instead. But in the end, that results in her own mother sacrificing herself to save everybody on Bardo, and it it has Dioza crystallizing herself, as well as Anders, who was killed in the whole um, chaos by Hope slashing his throat. So that's a lot of, that's two more sacrifices right there. Um, and then meanwhile, while all this is happening, Jordan is in the um, anomaly room and he thinks that the code that um, Bill has been obsessing over and that everybody's working towards was actually decoded wrong. He's thinking that instead of them just being symbols that they need the meanings for, he thinks they're um, Uh, written in a way similar to the Korean alphabet, I believe is what he was saying, how like these symbols could actually be be their own um, alphabet and deciphering what equals to, like trying to match how, which symbols match the alphabet, he'd be able to translate it. And he's thinking based off the message, because they're all saying that it's the last war, but he makes a point of saying that there's no reference to violence, there's no reference to all these 
negative associations with going to war in this decoded message. And him and Nyla think that, well, what if it's actually supposed to be a test? Like everything that they that's being mentioned is more of like being tested for something. So now them with Gabriel's help, they're going to try to decode this properly, um, especially if it's only one person who's supposed to take this test as like to determine who's worthy or something. Then they definitely don't want Bill uh, Cadigan being the person to do that test. I think it's going to be Clark that's going to have to do it, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, but there is that. So the last moments of the episode showed Hope grieving, grieving over her um, crystallizing mother. Um, and, and she's very... For someone who believes that Bardo has taken everything from her, this is just one more nail in the coffin right there, so to speak. So there's that. But let's move on to characters very quickly. Shaheda, we find out his name is Malachi. And he's from saying, I think we already knew that he was from San Diego crew, but it was because he they had put his full name together. Uh, we also see him listing a bunch of the former commanders to prove his lineage um, or to prove his claim for the throne. Um, so there's that. Also, his right eye, like I mentioned before, got sliced by Maddie, but it's also the exact same eye that he was missing in his original body when we saw him in the Mindscape when Maddie had the flame. So it seems like the right eye is never supposed to survive when it comes to uh, Shaeda. Um, so there's that. We do also find out from Nyla that Kali, or Calliope, was uh, known as the first flame keeper. So maybe she never did take the flame on and she just was the guardian for that. And that's how the whole thing started. Um, and then again, I mentioned before with the Korean, but Jordan um, revealed that he was very reluctant to learn Korean from Monty when he was a kid. But he's very happy that it's coming into play now, which I'm also happy too about. So that's something there. It's also pretty cool to learn a little bit, little bit more about Jordan's upbringing when him, it was just him, Harper, and Monty on the Allegis ship. So that's something there. Now some tidbits though. Uh, we do have Clark, uh, Clark, Raven, and Miller officially uh, reunited with Octavia. Um, and also meeting Hope officially for a brief moment. We do have Raven declaring Echo as her sister. As she tries to talk her down from um, cre uh, bringing on mass genocide on Bardo. Uh, we do also have Bill and Gabriel remembering the time before the first apocalypse when they were all on Earth and before Gabriel got sent to Planet Alpha. Um, so there's that. We do also have, this is the reason why I was trying to check the timelines like I mentioned earlier, is because Bill referenced being around for centuries. And I don't know if that's because of the Bardo time, because like for Gabriel, he's only been around for uh, decades I think at least a hundred years maybe I don't know because I'm trying to think of, like how many bodies has he have um so that's why I was trying to look up the, the timelines earlier to figure out if it matched the like if it's been so long for Bill to be on earth if it's been the exact same amount of time for Gabriel since they're both they're on two different planets that have different time dilations and then wondering how big of a time dilation is it from earth itself um, so that was something there. Also, we see Octavia leaving uh, a very tortured Levitt restrained and behind while they still plan to go find Echo and try to stop her. But then, like, if they had failed or if then, like, she pretty much left him to die with everybody else, essentially. So there's that. Um, I'm not going to do ship status today. Um just because there's a lot of other things I wanted to talk about. But I really want to get into the most shocking moment of the episode. Uh, it is pretty much the fact that we've got not only Anders' death, but we got Dioz's death as well. Um, Anders' slit throat from Hope. Oh, both by Hope, essentially, too, because Hope slits Anders' throat, and then when he drops the vial that had the bioweapon, she grabs it, makes a run for it to the water supply, drops, drops a drop of it into it, and then her mother... Um, puts her hand in the way and because it touches her skin it starts calcifying her or crystallizing her immediately so pretty much hope killed both of them and but be, it ended up being the most important person in her life and the most hated person she could think of so it was just very shocking how very quickly that had happened and um, like i honestly wasn't expecting anders to die just because he's been the figurehead of the enemy but i guess now that bill is awake again he kind of fills that spot and he's probably the one that he either lives or dies in the finale um so 
to see Andrews go was a surprise, and then just to see Dioza um, end the way she did, I just, I was not expecting that at all, and then it kind of ties in with more of the sacrifice um, in itself, if you go a little more deeper about it, Dioza literally sacrificed herself to save Bardo and her, her daughter when it came to the, her being the cause of the whole genocide thing, but then it's um, a little bit of sacrifice when it came to the talk about um, Gabriel and Bill talking about um, the people of Bardo are living life without what makes them human, which is emotions and connections and love and stuff like that. So that's the sacrifice there as well. It's just a, a lot of little things. And then when you go to Sanctum, you can see it as sacrifice as well when Indra pretty much sacrifices her her freedom from Shaheda just to spare, to have Maddie's life be spared. Um, so... It's a bunch of stuff when you really think about it. So, but the biggest shock is definitely those two deaths for sure. Um, now the parallel though, let's move on to that. The biggest parallel I can say is Echo wanting to kill Bardo, which really parallels um, what happened with Mount Weather in season two, and how we got the the genocide of the the mountain people, uh, the mountain men, and then Echo wanting to do the same for the people of Bardo. And you also so you get Clark in that moment trying to talk. Um, echo down from it and then you also get Octavia kind of doing the same thing as well because you've seen that she's grown from her time as Blood Reina in trying to impart her wisdom on there as well and with Echo we see her be very resistant against Clark showing the difference of the fact that Clark's actions at Mount Weather were all to save the people she loves while Echo's actions now were meant to be vengeance for the love for the loved ones she has lost so it was very interesting to see how she tried to rationalize how they were not in the same situation. But it was a very huge, as long as they're in Bardo, I feel like, and they want to tear it down, I feel like it's always going to be a parallel with Mount Weather, in a way. So there's that. I mean, could you technically parallel it with the City of Lights as well, too? I mean, with how it's of a different mindset, trying to go for peace and trying to bring everybody into the fold, and then eventually they tore the place down, essentially. Yeah, I'm wondering. So that's something there. Um, moving on to top three favorite moments. I absolutely love when Clark was just feeding into the lie that she had the flame and she was just pulling full authority over Bill, saying, well, here's the new deal. Here's here's this new deal. You're going to follow us or you're just, I'm not going to help you kind of thing. Love that attitude. It was just great to see Clark in that position once again. She kills it every time. And I really don't want to see when they find out she, that she doesn't have the flame or that the flame is destroyed. Um, so, anyways, just love Clark just taking control and needing to be that voice voice for them to follow kind of a thing. So there's that. Um, another favorite I had was just Jordan's theory about the the, the, the code from the Anomaly Orb. His reasoning behind it and how his rationale, of, and you pretty much get a little bit of Monty into it, where Monty was always about, like, violence isn't the answer, there's got to be another way, there's got to be a way for peace. And you really see more Monty come out in Jordan in that aspect when he's trying to repeat his father's um, uh, mantra, which I thought was pretty cool. And then also the way that he was able to decode uh, what he thinks might be the diff, uh, this new theory, I thought that was pretty cool. It'd be really great to see it plan out or pan out also for him to just do it in so little time where Bill and the others have been doing it for years upon years and they've gotten nowhere so that's that would just be a good kick in the butt type of a moment so that's up there another favorite I have which probably should not be a favorite but it was just shot so well was the fight scene between Shaheda and Indra I was so worried for Indra because as much as I would want Indra to kick ass and to like defeat Sh Shaheda, it's still too early for that to happen in the season. And with it being the final season, none of these characters are safe. There's no guarantee I'm going to see every character in, in the in the series finale. So it made sense more for me that this would be a chance for them to kill Indra off. As much as I hate for that option. But just the way it was shot, and she also had a new look as well, too, if you see. Both of them technically had a new look because he, uh, Shaheda actually dressed like the Dark Commander. Um, but anyways, the way that their, fo their 
fight scene was shot was just incredible, constantly in motion and movement. And it was just like outstanding. It just made you feel like you were part of that crowd and made it more tense to watch because it's like you don't want anything bad to happen or you want him to you want her to kick his butt, but you know it's too early in the game for it to fall in our favor. And then you see Maddie come in the way that she did, and I was just going, yes, do it. Maybe this is the kill shot. But again, of course not. She just ends up slicing through his eye, which was just badass to begin with. And then I, it, and then to have Indra flip and say, like, no, don't kill Maddie. I'll kneel if you leave her be. And then to see the reaction from the crowd when that happens, and then having them look to Indra saying, like, are you sure about this? And she's, like, motioning, like, just do it kind of a thing. And then Maddie just, dis- that was the one thing that confused me. Maddie just got up and disappeared without anybody noticing as quickly as she did. But it was just, like, that fight scene. It was like, wow. It's like, like, you could feel it. And then, yeah, so there's that. Um, but moving on to top three peed moments, the only peeve I really had was the fact that Octavia left Levitt in the restraints also the fact that it was Levitt like I in my previous video I thought when the promo first showed that it was Bellamy until I rationalized well why would he be in Bardo clothes so then it had to be Levitt but just the the fact that she left him restrained like I understand why she did because she didn't want to risk him going to get help from the other um from any of Anders people or any of the other disciples so I understand that but then at the same time it's like you left him to kind of die if if Echo went with her plan and it's kind of like where does that leave them as a couple because they were so good in the previous episode when they actually got together so it's like I'm 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 a fan of them for their ship but then so that's why it's a peeve that's like I don't know where they stand now so there's that but moving on to random questions very quickly first one if the last war starts when the final code is placed into the orb then why in the world would you want to rush to put that code into the orb? Like, I do not understand that. Like, is he really, is Bill really so far gone that he wants to rush for the afterlife and what it means to transcend, that he's just willing to risk? The possibility of this last war coming that would destroy humanity, it's just like, that makes no sense to me. If you know something is going if something happens and it's going to cause something really bad to happen why would you rush to make sure that something happens if you're trying to stop that bad thing from happening like you know what i mean so just that made no sense to me Uh, another question is after echo and hope stunt with the bioweapon what will happen to them are they still going to remain prisoners of bardo how are they going to talk their way out of this because i don't know if clark saying that she has the flame is going to give her much more sway than she tried um in the episode so that'll be something there and the last question is will indra try to overthrow shaheda again while kneeling before him as it were because her reaction her, her telling her her loyal uh tree crew warriors to just kneel down with her um it kind of made it seem like just go with it to me and like maybe she has a backup plan or like maybe she really is giving up so that Maddie could like be safe. Obviously, that's not the case because he can easily go back on that word and he pretty much orders uh, Grounder Knight to go hunt her down and kill her. Um, and that's also another thing too. They try to go after the faithful and they found out they were gone. So it's like, what's Indra's next game plan as well? So that's something there. But let's move on to predictions very quickly. In the promo for 7-11, we see Bellamy trying to survive in a cave. And it's a very snowy cave. And we see Levitt saying that he's alive. So I'm assuming he's talking about Bellamy. But it seems like, and the episode I believe is called uh, After the Sixth Planet. So I think it's Etheria, maybe? Let me double check. I just went right past it. Where are you? Yeah, Etheria. Yeah, Etheria, the last planet. So, it's a very snowy planet, because I'm pretty sure if they were on Akira, would they have known? I don't know. But it seems like Bellamy has been there for a while. So, hopefully we actually get a Bellamy-centric episode. Um, so with that, though, the synopsis reads that pretty much it's 
saying, where in the universe is Bellamy Blake? It leads that leaves it at that. So I am so excited to finally get those answers because I want to know where the hell he's been, how long it's actually been for him because he definitely looked he looked like it's been a long time. Um, so I'm excited to see about that. But otherwise, guys, that is pretty much it. What did you guys think of this episode? What did you guys like about it? What do you think will happen next? Not only in the next episode, but in the final episodes coming. Please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your own thoughts, theories, and opinions about what you think will happen next. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I reblog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all that good stuff, all fun in one place. Go check that out. I am behind. I did update as best I can for the all the stuff that pertained to the first half of the season. Um, but again, I'm in week four of my next semester for my program so everything's really ramping up for me uh a lot of documents are getting longer and with shorter deadlines so i really should be focusing on that right now but i tried to update as best i can uh, before the hiatus happened um so go check that out wordpress again link for that is down below anything i post online is connected to wordpress a little more organized a little more detailed but still work in progress as well um doing the best I can with the time that I have. Um, but otherwise, guys, that is pretty much it. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your patience. I hope you come back next week to see what I have to say about the next episode because we finally get our answers about Bellamy. But until then, guys, this is Mel. Wish you all a great day, great week here everywhere. Bye for now.